Reiki, unscheduled Reiki and channeling webinar with Jim and we have with us Guru Dan, hey, and Johannes. Hello. Um, <clears throat> today is what? Um, October 19, 2015. And we'll talk about Reiki and we'll channel about Reiki. Okay, very good. Where do you want to start? Uh, we start from announcement. Uh, there is a still an opportunity to sign up for for a paid Reiki class, and you get a certificate, you get an attunement. It's hundred dollars for um, eight, hours. eight hours of uh, teaching. And to sign up, go to humancolony.org and click on Reiki. And there is a sign up email, which is Reiki at humancolony.org. <clears throat> Just send an email. And you can pay the money to uh, PayPal Reiki at humancolony.org. Uh, and this is all through um, certified teachers. Jim and I, we went through all the training, and we are Reiki for teachers masters. Te taught by Jim. Did you do? Did you get your Reiki four from Barbara? Right. The same time as you did. Only you did it remotely, and I did it in person. Yes. So Barbara Carlton, um, and uh, we are connected through seven steps of teacher-student relationship to the founder of Reiki, uh, Usui Mac uh, Mikao Usui. Okay, um, <clears throat> so what is Reiki, right? We are still in the very beginning. Jim, what is Reiki? Reiki is energy healing. It comes through your hands. It, you can use it in touch. You can use it with without touch but it is energy from the universe energy from the earth and um, energy from within you as well and it mixes with those that you are um, healing you make them aware that their energy is part of the healing process because your energies and all the people that are helping use energies are mixing with their energies to help them heal so. Let's, let's do a blessing. Let's do a blessing for the beginning. Okay. okay. All right. Thank cool. you. I'll do a blessing. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, for all the things that you provide for us. That all that everything is going to be okay, and that the lessons we learn we can use to help other people. We ask that you be with us now. That you would help us to. Uh, learn Reiki to make it something that is really a tangible and useful and helps the earth and helps ascension. We just thank you for all that you do and what you, that you are with us right now. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. All righty then. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, Karen. Hi, uh, hi, hi. Karen, what's We're your experience trying... with energy healing? Yes. Sorry? What's what? your experience with energy healing? <clears throat> well, um, one, one moment. Um, let me plug in my headset and I'll tell you one second. All right. <laughs> well, I'm a Reiki master. I, I've been a Reiki master since about 1996. <clears throat> Um, my original Reiki, can you hear me or not? Yes, yes, yeah. you're good. Okay. My original teacher was one of the first uh, people that was trained by um, the second group that was trained by Mrs. Takata back when, uh, you know, years ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so she's in a direct line right back to the beginning of Reiki. And, what? you know, Reiki was really one of the things that opened me up initially. So I, I, use it now it's expanded in many different ways it's not just for healing anymore you know it's it's also about in opening energy portals and um, <clears throat> using stuff I use Reiki quite often on my dog that I had years ago it really kept her alive so I, I'm a big believer in the energy and the intent it taught me how to set intent and and what I'm doing and stuff like that so that's wonderful. Yeah, same thing with me and Jim. I guess Reiki was a door. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was. Still but Jim, is. Did, Jim, did, did, you, uh, did you speak 
or perceive the entities before you started Reiki? No, never. Um, I started channeling after Reiki because all my senses were open, all, all the channels were open, and I didn't even really know what Reiki was until it happened, started happening. So. Yeah, for me it was um, converting the fear into knowing, the fear into just a skill. So until I got into Reiki, I felt the energies, and I was taught by, especially in Russian culture, if you feel, if you feel energy, if there is something spooky, you are supposed to be spooked. <laughs> you always expect the worst. And uh, everybody would tell you in Russia that it's so dangerous, dangerous to work with energies. It's dangerous. The energies can do something, right, to you. Or, yeah. And, you know, and, and then you realize uh, that... Uh, you create, you create whatever from this energy. So if you want to create negativity, you can create negativity. If you want to create positivity, you create positivity. And Reiki is purified, very simplistic, very simplified way of uh, working with the energies in a very positive manner. Uh, so, and that brings us to their uh, five principles of Reiki. And I think we might just stop on principle one um, and kind of uh, basically it's a law of attraction but it says just for today I will not worry the principle one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anybody wants to comment on that yeah worry is a really negative thing so just for today I will not worry actually it should be just for my lifetime I will not worry but <laughs> but I'm sure that that's uh, a lot more difficult than just for a day. But uh, worry brings in something uh, that's not needed in healing, something that's not uh, necessary at all. So um, just for today, leave all that negativity behind so that when you're doing your healing, you're in a positive frame a pos and a positive intent and doing all the right things. So leave Leave your uh, own problems behind. Right. Yeah, that, that's the question. You know, can anyone be a healer? Right? Can anyone do Reiki? And so many people are in um, denial or in anger, which is the principle number two. Right? Just for today, will not be angry. And it's almost impossible, I would say, to not be angry, not to be negative, not to worry. You really have to worry once in a while, at least, you know, when uh, things go wrong, you have to kind of be alert to the, the fact that things go wrong and do something about it. And doing something about it is principle number three. Just for today, I will do my work honestly. So these are three major principles in proper order. And it's all about the law of attraction. So basically, how do you become a Reiki healer, right? You, you have to change, basically, right? You got to change. I mean, if you want to do something new, you got to change. You cannot be the same person without changing. You wouldn't become the healer, right? And the main change is that thing is just for today. You don't have to change for the whole life. But... When you channel the Reiki energy, when you become a healer, when you do the healing, you really have to stay positive. And sometimes it's obviously easy, if you, especially if you're in the presence of someone shining, like Jim. If you're in the presence of Jim and you do Reiki with Jim, there is some other person on the table and you're placing the hands. Jim shines and you kind of reflect the shine that comes from him or reflect the light that comes onto you from the skies and from the earth. And it's very easy. But what if you got a very sick person, like dying person? And obviously everybody around knows that cancer is, is death. And, you know, the diagnosis is grim. And how can you be a healer when everything is so sad, right? And I guess I will poke Karen with that question if you want to participate. <laughs> ah, you're very smart to do that because I had something 
<laughs> you really picked up that I had an answer for that. <laughs> One of the first um, people that I treated with Reiki, that I actually, there was an exchange of money and she came to my house and um, <clears throat> was a woman who was actually in the government in Florida. She was one of the state council people and she had cancer and it was quite advanced. It was breast cancer and it was so advanced that literally when you put your hands on her skin, her skin was warm from where the, the cancer was. And <clears throat> one of the things is that she wasn't going to recover because her body was so already so far gone. Um, but what she said to me is she said this Reiki isn't for my body it's for my soul and this is helping me heal um, so that when I do move on I'm really done with this world so <clears throat> you know I, I would just say that Reiki works on every level it works on the spiritual it works on the physical it works on the emotional and it also I think heals the practitioner as well um, so for me it was very healing to understand that this woman was healing in a different way than what you would expect from a physical healing. She was healing emotionally the hurts that she had in her life. She was healing spiritually so that she was able to let go and, and to, to find her peace and to find her light so that when she really did transition she was complete. And the, and the physical body had very little to do with the wholeness that was truly her. Cool. So that was, that was a huge lesson <clears throat> because there was the part of me that thought, what if I'm doing this and nothing's coming of it? But she already knew and she, she, the, one of the reasons that my teacher had wanted me to work with her is because she knew how much awareness that this woman had about her own situation and it really taught me about what the healing was really for and how healing can be defined in many different ways and it sometimes has nothing to do with you know your physical body but but every other aspect of you wonderful absolutely true anybody else welcome Jasmina and Michelle yes anybody else wants to comment on any of the above topics um, this is Michelle. Hi. Um, hey. So, I was told by my first Reiki practitioner, like the first time I ever got Reiki, that this is something available to everyone. It's our birthright um, to be a healer. Yes. And so, I actually checked out a book from the library, learned the symbols, and started practicing before I ever got attuned or anything and went through the process of learning and it worked then too like <laughs> the thing that I find um, at this point is that my last teacher when I did my Reiki 2 um, it was a couple day class is that um, I'm a hollow bone and I just like ask the um, like Usui, my Reiki guides, my higher self, my guides, anyone else who wants to participate, maybe some certain people have shown up in my sessions um, to do the healing and because I have doubt that sits at the back of my head like I am doing this but it isn't me I know that like I know that on some level so I just imagine hollow bone, hollow bone, hollow bone the whole time. And I've had really amazing sessions with Brooke recently, my daughter, um, where I can't really tell what's happening, but I'm just the conduit. And she's having really strong um, reactions to this. And I would agree with Karen that everything physical that I have experienced in my life and most people is merely a reflection of unhealed emotional pain and or spiritual That's true. stuff. That's true. So, yeah. so I don't ever think, oh, I need to fix, you know, this body thing. I 
just go through the fields and kind of let my hands know what field um, the healing needs to take place in. But then again, Reiki knows exactly where to go and what to do, and I don't have to be in charge of that. I just have to be willing to give my time and my exactly. love. So that's what i got to say about that. Yes, you'll find that everybody does have Reiki in their hands to a different extent, but it is it is universal. Everybody does have some power in their, their hands, some energy in their hands. Some people are able to feel it. Some people are able to really, you know, uh, ignite it whenever they even say Reiki. And other people don't feel it at all, but they still can heal other people and still know that the energy is getting there because of the results. So you don't have to feel it. I, I do tend to feel it. It just doesn't... Um, sometimes it's different. Sometimes, literally, when I ground myself and if I'm standing up and working on someone, my feet will shake, and then my hands will start to shake over the right area. Well, and you won't know it's the right area. Like, I won't know, but then the client will say, oh, that's my trauma area for me, or whatever. But I've had, I have that happen a lot. Do you yeah. guys ever have that happen? Oh, yeah. The energy goes in stronger wherever... Uh, I mean, wherever the energy goes in stronger when you're touching the body, that's where they need the help. And so I often say, oh, do you have uh, shoulder pain? Do you have back pain? They're always going, yeah, how did you know? But, but you can tell by touching them where the pain is. The energy goes in stronger. Yeah, I feel it like um, goosebumps all over the body. And I know that's a big spirit comes. It's usually angelic energy for me. And I feel the buzz in the fingers. And uh, sometimes if it is a sharp pain, it's a buzz in uh, like zit, zit, zit in the fingertips. Yeah. And, and here in that spot. And um, there is also that warm energy which comes out of the whole hand. And when, when it flows, that's kind of normal. Even with healthy people, it flows. And just by the way it flows, sometimes you feel that it is a healthy flow. And sometimes it feels like it is a unhealthy flow. Basically, the f I mean, flow of healthy energy to an unhealthy place, on disbalanced place. So you can feel just by the quality of connection. Sometimes you feel absolutely happy in a positive way, and sometimes you feel that you are happy that you are healing, but there is something there that needs to be healed. And um, other sensations is sometimes like like a blow on the hand. It's when I do it from distance, you can kind of feel that blow of the of the air. It's it's very physical for me, yeah. and also in addition, it is a feeling of the answers. I basically I always have kind of mental logic. Often have sometimes I don't, but most of the times I do mental work, saying, "What is this patient experiencing? What is the question? What is the message I need to deliver to the client? What is?" Um, what is the message, basically? That's psychic work. What is the message? And and it comes. So I, I deliver the message, and sometimes it is, <laughs> I have to wrap it many, in many sweet layers. Like, uh, the message could be sharp, but I have to kind of reward it in a way that, uh, like a parable, so it, it can be delivered. <laughs> and and uh, yes, um, also uh, there are the energies in the spine that you feel, the energies in the head and usually I work with closed eyes and I go into meditative state myself so if for me it is a meditation and sometimes the light comes right in the head and it's like I say welcome and thank you that's that's um, and that's the principle number four I believe uh, just for today let me read it because I don't know the the, the words but the principle I know what was the fourth principle <laughs> um, okay, uh, just for today, I will give thanks for my many blessings. That's how it's worded. But thanks is the key word here. There. So being in a state of gratitude is, is nice for starting, for continuing, and closing. And it's, it's very sort of uh, new to us, to many of us, to think before hand 
right? So you think their universe for healing before even you started the healing. But basically, it's uh, the time it doesn't really matter. You thinking and being in the thankful state brings you in a certain state of mind, which is um, a, Reiki a Reiki healer meditative state of mind. When I come to a client, usually I don't speak much before, but some people do a whole introduction. But what I do, I place them on the, on the table, invite them to lay down in a comfortable position, face up. I place the hands on their head. And as usual, I have that my pillow here, which symbolizes the head. All right, it's a little squished, but basically I do upside down, um, upside down, how do you call it? What's, what's the name for that? Uh, mind meld. You know, Vulc Vulcan, Star Trek Vulcan mind meld, I do it upside down, basically, like like this. I'll show. Like that. Like that. My hands behind. And and it comes now naturally. It's kind of a second, second nature. I lift them up spiritually. Just I go get in a joyful state of mind, even if they are in bad shape. I just... Cancer, I smile. I mean, what else can you do? You smile. I mean, some people would think that's impolite, but basically if there is a story about cancer, the only thing you can do, you can smile, All right? Death, you smile, because you understand that death is reunion. Death is return home. Death is liberation. Death is very spiritual. It is spirit releasing the body and returning home. It's it's extremely spiritual. I'm it's not saying that yeah let's let's die now or let's kill someone or let's help someone to go to pass over but but there isn't there is two sides, right? This side is is can be sad and the other side is is the birth of a new life basically. The death here is the birth of new life there. So accepting it, accepting it and smiling is, is the first step for healing. Even for the loved one, for the animal, for anyone, for, any, for anybody, for yourself. Accepting the fact that, you know, the death will come at a due time. And uh, you can do whatever is needed, any healing, but, but if, it will eventually come, right? So, so again, we have a couple of our Reiki friends, Reiki masters, uh, passed away and our great friends and both of them went away with cancer. So Reiki heals the soul, helps the, 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 the healthy passage on the other side, but, but still the cancer could be a way out. And uh, it's just how the world is designed here. It's, it's, it's just something which you can't understand and just the thing that you don't understand but accept. So, coming with a positive attitude is the key. And sometimes it's very easy to use certain symbols like candles, certain symbols like sage, the smell of sage. So, I'm now tuned into the smell of sage. Right now I have a smell of kaifi in my burner and it just brings you into a certain vibration. Obviously, it's a permission slip. You don't have to do anything to do Reiki, but, but in the beginning stage, the protected environment, semi-dark room or almost dark room, and uh, kind words, kind voice, uh, soothing music all lift you up, kind of. Just for today, we wouldn't worry. That's right for that moment, for the Reiki, release your worries. You have to shift up to a higher state. Just for that moment, don't be angry. Not in the, to the angels, not to the gods, not at the humans, not at yourself, not anything. Just, just be happy. You have to heal being happy. That's the the only state for Reiki healing, the only proper state in uh, elevated, sacred happiness, right? And then do your job. Basically, doing your job is another key. So how can I do the thing when I don't understand what's happening? 
And it's guaranteed you don't understand the whole thing. You understand only part of it, not the whole thing. So how can you do it? It's just you do your job. Like, understand that it's just a service. You officiate the healing which is done by higher energies. You're providing your hands. You're providing the protected environment. You are a guide which doesn't understand everything, but you still can guide and officiate the process of healing. And the patient has to do it himself, themselves. All right. Um, please comment on any of the above. You said a lot of nice things. <laughs> so, I, I agree. I, I just I think it's important for people to understand that we don't do any kind of healing. We're just, it's just another form of channeling. The energy is coming through us. So it's important to understand that there's no ego involved. You are, as you said, in service to, you're giving your hands, but the energy is coming from the universe and the intention is being honored by the universe uh, to, to bring that healing energy in. But no one can really take any credit for any of the healing that comes forward. The only thing that you can do is be thankful that you're, you're being used in that kind of way because you are being of service. So I think that's, <clears throat> but those fall into the Reiki tenets as well of just doing anything honestly and humbly and, you know, and not having any pride about it. It's nice to be proud of it, but don't be prideful and think that you've done anything other than Mm -hmm. be of service. So. And there that, is always, yes. Oh, that's true. Uh, give thanks for the energy, for the ability to do the healing, but don't take credit for the healing because it's not all you. That's very good. The very good thing to remember is that it's not us that's doing the healing. It, it's, but we're just the tool. It's just like channeling. We're the tool. It's not us who's channeling. It's not our messages, but it's definitely us that's being used to, as a tool to do it. So that's, but we can't take the credit for the message. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that answers another question which many people ask. Uh, how do you provide so much energy and how does it happen that you don't get hurt when you treat others, right? And the True. answer is you just become a channel. You don't give your own energy, you add a little bit of your own energy, but the main energy comes from the universe. You are channel channeling it. And it always goes goes both ways. It's multi yeah, two two directional. Multi directional. It goes from the earth through your feet, through your heart, uh, through your hands to the patient, and goes through the sky to your heart, through the hands, to, to the patient, and it goes backwards through their heart and to you. And usually, usually, if you're pure and you do your job right, you come energized and you live energized. You live in a peaceful state of mind because you just, when you channel, you do your job, it, it lightens you up, lightens you up, right? Definitely. It definitely heals you as well. I always, I always have the impression when I do mediumship readings, and also maybe you understand this too, or when you're channeling, a lot of times when the person comes to you with an issue, you're giving information, but it's always kind of twofold. It's for the person that you're giving it to, but it's also for you because uh -huh. that person has come to you for a reason. They were attracted specifically to you for a reason. And there's there's that connection that you have where sometimes exactly what you're saying that they need to hear, you also need to hear it as well. And, and as, as far as the healing energy, you're also needing that as well. So it, it becomes twofold. It's, it's double. Absolutely. Yep. Are you... <laughs> yes, um, I, I I usually find ways where I can do Reiki, like like there is a weekly event event here, um, like in Chicago there are several Reiki shares, so you can come for free there and provide services or receive services, receive Reiki, so, so you just come once a week at like 7 p.m. and there is like four beds and there are 
free free Reiki energy healings, and uh, we provide the, the healing. And and when you do the healing, you basically you step in the same river, step in the same vibration, in the same wave as a client, as a patient, and and um, you get you get your energy flushed. Basically, the, one of the principles of Reiki, the me mechanical principle, is that you offer a healthy vibration, the special Reiki vibration to them, and it's up to them to step up and meet this vibration and get tuned into that vibration. And it happens not only on the whole body, but it happens on every every small part of the body, on the chuck on every chakra. So that's why you place the hands in different places. <sighs> so finding your local Reiki community and getting used to these energies is essential. I recently discovered that yoga energies are so similar. When I get a Reiki person, like who is into Reiki, when I place the hands, I feel their energies as Reiki energies. And when I get a yoga person on the table, it's the same energies, it's open in the same way. And non yoga, non Reiki is closed usually. So that's, you know, that's my experience that yoga and Reiki people are, are very similar in many ways in, in the energy flow, in being open to the energy flow. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention is what you do uh, if you get a person who is hard to work on, like very sick or very angry or very sad or very depressed. And what you do if you get a person who is absolutely healthy, right? <laughs> it's another challenge. How do you do the healing if the person is very healthy, right? Or if it is very spirit, highly spiritual person, like doing Reiki on gym is a challenge because he is so much higher vibe, you have to climb several steps up before you can actually touch his energy, right? Um, how do you work on a person uh, that doesn't want to be healed, right? So these are kind of challenges and you have to like really play with it, at least from 3D perspective, it's challenging. Any any answers to these questions? Yeah, there's there's lots of different. Everybody has their own style of Reiki and how they approach Reiki. Uh, but if you're going to be working on somebody that's really not in a very depressed state, in a very low state, um, I would you know uh, protect myself. I, I would just say you know I would do a little uh, meditation before I even worked on them and say. Just let me be as effective as possible with this person because they need to open up. You see, if they don't open up for you, it, the Reiki's not really getting through. Does, does anybody ever experience that if somebody's just closed up? Uh -huh. Sometimes it's the, it's the, the depression and stuff that closes them right up. You know, they're just like closed. Can I just like talk to them a little bit and ask them what they're expecting from the Reiki? Uh, I asked them if they ever had it before, what they wanted to do for them, if they would help me with it, and uh, would be involved, their intention be involved in helping me to help them, and tell them what things that might uh, uh, they might feel, and that it's about relaxing, being in a comfortable, relaxed position when you start, so that the best results can be can happen when you are most relaxed and most comfortable so I would try to just calm them down a little bit at the first and then just tell ask them if you want to touch or not touch and if you are going to touch them I would go to their feet first if they're really nervous and find out if they want their feet touched but if you work with their reflexology you can relax them a lot if you rub their feet first and then go right to the head, either the head or the feet first, and then do the other end, the head, where this, where all their spirituality is and stuff, because that will help relax them too. And then, then I do my own style after that of moving around the body and checking the uh, energy levels of the meridians. But um, 
first of all, I just would like to relax them. And the more relaxed they get, the more able to heal them you are, or the more able to be healed they are. So, and it, it's about making them feel comfortable and relaxed, and that it's nothing to fear, and it's not a problem, you know, and if they get uncomfortable, to let me, let you know immediately so you can get them back into a, a comfortable state. It's all about comfort at the beginning. And if you run into somebody that's really uncomfortable, that is your first job, is to relax them as much as possible before you even start um, your actual Reiki. And that's why I say to either uh, rub the feet a little bit or um, or rub the head a little bit or whatever, the neck and shoulders. But to get them as relaxed as possible before you actually start putting a lot of energy into them. So, And a lot of times that will. I find that if you talk to people and they, they and or if they've heard of who you are, if they know you from someone or has connections with you from some other place, you will find that they, they relax a little easier because other people trust you, then they can start to trust you. But if they don't really know you very well, if you're at the, like the YMCA and this is the first time you've ever seen this person and they never had a Reiki before, then that's when you might want to start doing the uh, relaxation parts. Talk softly, talk, ask questions how they are, ask them about you know what they need done and be very friendly with them. Open them up a little bit, you know, use your skills as a person uh, to communicating with another person to just let them know that this is nothing that to be afraid of and this is something to just uh, the better that more you relax the better the treatment will be so that's a key the more relaxed they become the greater the treatment will be because why when do you get your best healing when you're asleep they tell you to rest right so the more relaxed you are the better you're you are able to heal now now if you're working on a healthy person you may not feel anything at all you may just be putting their stuff back into alignment and that's great it's easier to heal it's easier to work on somebody if you feel a lot of energy going in but if you don't it's still going in it's still relaxing it's still bringing a service so don't feel like you're not doing anything if you're working on a healthy person because what you're doing is realign, realigning all those energies that are out of bounds or out of, out of whack and there will be some nobody can be that perfect so your energy healing is doing some good it might not be healing something uh, real uh, urgent or it might not even be healing pain but it is healing spiritually, it's healing emotionally, and it's healing physically in the sense that you're straightening out their energy fields if indeed they need straightened out. And then also their chakras are being encouraged and brightened as well. So don't worry, if you run into a really healthy person, just do what you can and they, you know what? They're going to tell you after it's over, you know, I didn't think I needed a Reiki treatment. But I feel so much better. Have you ever experienced that? They're going to tell you that they feel better, even if they weren't unhealthy. So. Uh huh. Yeah, you pronounced almost everything which I wanted to say. Good. So we synchronized pretty well in that. In that. Good. Anybody else has a comment on that? I do. Um, <laughs> Sorry, you go first. I'm coughing over here. Go ahead. Okay. So. Recently, I noticed that when I engage in this, I kind of ask my higher self to connect to the higher self of the person I'm working on. So, because if they don't want to be healed, they're not going to be healed. And al although I've had sessions on my own self where I have, I'm like either convulsing, bursting into tears, or wildly uncomfortable. But as a recipient, I understand that's just energy movement. 
So I don't know what you guys do about that, but I don't, that doesn't bother me or make me as a client like mad. I just know stuff is happening. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Um, it's part of our lesson, yes. It's like, what happens if somebody is convulsing on your table? That was one of the questions. <laughs> well, I'm I'm the convulsor. Although with Brooke, that happened with her the other day when I was giving her Reiki. So to me, it's like your body, the energy is flowing through, and it's just shifting stuff where it needs to go. Is how I perceive it. It feels very mm -hmm. powerful, um, certainly. Um, and I, so to me, that's actually normal because I've done it myself getting Reiki, so it wouldn't bother me to see somebody do that. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that would be a thing for other people. Because it's not always relaxing. Sometimes I literally am just sobbing because stuff is moving, you know. Anybody wants to comment on convulsing and, and crying on the table? Well, that's also, it's a release. It's a release yes, of emotion. It's a release. It's a movement. It's, it's, a, it's also a cleansing and a healing. So it, it's working in a different way. It may not be a warm feeling on your shoulders, but it's definitely working and shifting things. And, you know, sometimes when you're, you're crying, it can be just... You may not understand why, but there is some there is some sorrow that is being released, and and you know we don't always have to know every little thing down to the the smallest minutia of what it is, but trust that it's something that your body is letting go, and that that's a that's a good thing. So I, I would just say let it flow, let it happen, and don't overanalyze it. Oh, just, I just love it be. that. I mean, I personally love when that happens. I don't need to know what it is. That's what I think is beautiful about raking, and I don't know if everybody agrees here, but I feel like I don't need to know everything, that Reiki can let it, can process it and move it out without me having to, like, mind process it. Um, Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Don't overanalyze it. Don't over be overly logical, overly mental. Yeah. Yes. So with, was, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Michelle. So with people that I would work with, I would say it's been my experience that, you know, sometimes you feel like you're floating through the universe in a galaxy on a nice fluffy cloud and, you know, rainbows and angels are hanging out with you. And sometimes it just moves the stuff it needs to move and that can look a lot of different ways. So I don't know if that's... I'm not like in practice, so I just like work on people um, and myself. And I have the same reactions with myself. I still get the body things and or sobbing and or laughter and or lots of things. So, but I don't exactly. know if there's I I don't know if there's a protocol for that. But I definitely do not. I would not like I, I understand a new client, like wanting them to be relaxed. I mean, that's a really lovely thing. But when there's a lot of stuff going on in your life, having a visceral reaction to the energies clearing and moving on your behalf for healing, that can look a lot of different ways. Anybody else on the topic of crying and convulsing on the table? Yes, I agree that it's a lot of releasing, and I agree that at at times it may seem disconcerting, but I don't think that the that whoever's experiencing it is feeling disconcerted in the sense that they want you to stop. You can ask them, but I've never had anybody who was in that position say, "No, I want you to stop." Mostly, they're saying, "No, it's wonderful. Keep going." So. Um, and it's very releasing, it's very, uh, it's exactly what they need, actually, so that's, that's what you have to remember. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, I, I experienced it many times, Most, mostly from 
I think it always always were ladies like of different ages, often young, and uh, many many times. And um, it sort of has a certain pattern. It has a certain pattern, and I always feel uh, abandoned there because you know they have a profound experience. I have no clue what's happening, right? But you just get used to that, and um, the service you do, you are guarding the situation. You're holding your hands, and sometimes you even release your hands, you're just holding the energy, you're holding the the space, you're holding the space with your hands and let the spirits do their job and you are just basically providing the environment, the excuse, the uh, safety, the care and the kindness, you're providing that and it goes through just first they cry, then they laugh, then they become peaceful, then they smile and they're absolutely ecstatically happy. That's that's what happens, and uh, there is nothing to worry about. Basically, if uh, if if I knew that something goes wrong, I would intervene, and I would intervene with a strong, um, say, hypnotic hypnotic voice, strong commanding voice, uh, directing my kind direction. But so far in Reiki, I never had to do that. I had to do it another certain situations but not in that situation so if something goes wrong like possession with evil spirit then you might bring your energy and your vibe but but if it is a hidden crying and hidden especially if you know there is some uh, romance problem or some other that kind of problem which death release problem like uh, grievance then you just let them cry. It's it's the same thing you would do with a friend when a friend cries on your shoulder, but but that happens in a Reiki situation more through spirit and less through you. So you just hold the space and give them as much time as they need to go through that. That's that's about it. And obviously, you know, in my mind I sometimes ask if there is anything I'm supposed to do and sometimes I get sort of messages for them for, for later, but they just hold the space and wait. And breathe, like breathing is essential for, for being a healer, so breathe and be at peace and, you know, if there are people around, you have to explain them, that's all right, that's all right, let it release, let it release, that's okay, it's nice to cry, yeah, cry more, it's good for you, I mean, that's, that's you know, common, how do you say, common knowledge, common practice. Right, and here we bring the topic which is uh, the fifth principle of Reiki. Just for today, I will be kind to my neighbor and every living thing. To my neighbor and every living thing. And um, what, what I wanted to pronounce, sometimes I have trouble for myself establishing a connection to a person. It's like if the person is negative or very different or unhealthy with unhealthy habits, um, for me, it's sometimes hard to directly associate with that person and direct my energy and kind of get repulsed sometimes. So if that happens, uh, I do kind of, it's called time travel, but basically I reduce time reduction. I reduce them to a young child. And then it's much easier for me to experience kindness to that person. So if I imagine them to be a child, uh, helpless and uh, requiring my motherly caring, then it's so easy for me to connect. Just don't, don't change their diaper. Say again? Just don't change their diaper. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's actually brilliant. Yes. I mean, that is a really beautiful way to go about healing someone with a really negative kind of vibe. Thanks for that. Yeah. I think a lot of people that have, um, they're unclean or whatever, they're, they don't clean themselves up that well, or their clothes are, you know, they wear the same clothes all the time. And Because I work with the homeless, and that is one of the problems that you run into, is that people are not really, um, that their uh, hygiene is not that great. And so you just sort of have to put your place in a, uh, put yourself in their place in a way and and just say they need Reiki too, and and you know what? I don't really. It doesn't really bother me after a while. I just go and I talk to them, and they became they become just someone else, you know. 
beautiful thing. Um, but imagining him that as a baby is really a wonderful idea. <laughs> Another thing for um, when you, you don't want to touch people, obviously you can do Reiki in the air, but also uh, I just learned like a couple months ago and it works really well. I use it all the time now. Uh, you place a, a sheet uh, on, on the table and when the client la uh, lays on the table, you kind of rub the sheet, use the sheet as a gloves around the head. So the, 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 uh, you put the sheet on their uh, head and touch the, the face through the piece of fabric. Obviously, you leave the space for the nose, for the breathing, but otherwise, like you can easily work on their eyes, even touching the eyes very gently, and work on their face. So, uh, and and then the, the Reiki energy goes through fabric just fine. So that is, uh, it feels good on both sides, I would say. And when 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 they worked on me through the shit, it was also great. And uh, and. Um, uh, so touching the skin sometimes is sensitive, but in, even for clean people, I mean, you, especially if you work on several people in a row, you wash your hands, but touch, working through the fabric is, is, is great. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention is the fear of failure. Basically, it's not your responsibility. Your responsibility to be there and provide their hands, the intention, your responsibility, your resp is still responsible for yourself. You don't, you are not in control when you do Reiki. You are not in full control. It's not like a doctor or a surgeon which is in control and supposed to understand everything. It's just the other way around. You provide the invitation, the intention. It's very important when the client lines, uh, lay, lays, lies on the table and allows you to work on themselves. On it is there way of saying I agree for the healing and sometimes especially if they are not opening if they don't really we are not they're not ready to to be healed it's very nice to ask them what is that brought you here how do you feel and what do you expect and how can I help you what uh, health issues do you want to work on and things of that sort and even my friend who does Reiki, she's like strongly willed lady. Oh, uh, when she works on me and I have certain pain, she says, do you really want this pain to go away? And, you know, she repeats that question. And you, uh, she wants to make sure you really, really, really want that pain to go away. Because some people, you know, they kind of want it to go away, but they also hold on something associated with that, that pain. So they hold on to some anger or some memory or some habit which brings in the pain. So if you really want that pain to go away, you have to release what is associated or causes it. So that, can, that agreement from the person is absolutely essential. It has to be, sometimes it has to be pronounced aloud, what, what they really want to achieve. And again, you're not responsible for them healing themselves. You are providing that environment, the intention, and that's about it. You are there for them, but you only offer, and it's their responsibility to accept the offer. You are tuning in the instrument, but tuning up the instrument, but you only provide the tone, and it's up to them to grab that tone and take it. It kind of goes along with the line of when Reiki was first discovered, doesn't it? <laughs> because mm -hmm. the, the 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 monk would go down and heal the people, and they would be healed, and he would come back and go back into meditation, and he'd come back down off his mountain a month later, and they were sick again with the same ailments. Mm -hmm. So that was the that was actually one of the motivations for getting the Reiki in the beginning is finding the true way of healing and and the true way of healing was that people changed they transformed and part of that transformation is them also having the intention to heal as opposed to just you having the intention for them to heal that has to be met both on both levels mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, another thing you mentioned that uh, Often, always, people come to you for a reason, and yeah. lately it's 
over 50% people come to me for a reason which is not exactly to get healed uh, physically. They come for answers. So basically, for me, it becomes more a channeling session <laughs> than, a, yeah. than a Reiki healing, physical healing session. And I, I'm sure for Jim it is the same. Most of his Reiki clients, they also get a, a channeling addition. It's not necessarily he goes channels specific person, but Jim just gives them higher answers and it flows absolutely beautifully. So so I do channeling when I when I do my Reiki I channel. I think it's I think the I, I was gonna say it earlier, but I think it's also in, in relationship to what you just said, it almost doesn't matter why they're coming. They're coming to you for something and again being of service is being willing to give them whatever they need. I know that when I would do Reiki a lot of times on like psychic fairs or you know there's a lot of people that are just hurting in a way and that intimacy that you share with them just touching them is so important it's like it's important to get hugs it's important to be touched as a human being and there's a vulnerability of someone sitting down or laying down in front of you and just allowing you to place your hands on them there's there's a trust exchange that goes and that in and of itself can be very very um, uplifting for the person and I also get lots of messages so you're it's sort of a twofer you know you come for Reiki you get a reading but I think it's all part of it and that person again is drawn specifically to you for a specific re reason and Reiki may be the what they're coming for but whatever happens within the session is really what's supposed to happen and, and to let that flow and just be okay with it whether you say oh they're really here for healing or they just need a reading whatever it is again being of service you just are giving them what they need and that's your job to absolutely, do that absolutely yeah I recently saved a life it was a very funny story but I saved a life doing Reiki <laughs> a person was guided to my Reiki table, oh, of course. So uh, that was at um, a Russian Song Festival in the forest. It was a campground, and uh, we had I had uh, I offered uh, my Reiki booths, my Reiki table, and I had many people coming through me, maybe about nine. And uh, the last one, I was already finished, and I was walking somewhere around the campfires. And there was a gentleman with a with a motorcycle. He was about to start going home, and he was sort of not drunk, but he was even worse. He was completely absent mind. I didn't realize that. I was starting talking to him, and I mentioned that I do Reiki, and he said maybe you can help. And we went with him, and he laid on my table. And um, as soon as I placed the hands on him, he went asleep. And he slept for the rest of the day, basically. So I had to pull out my sheets from under him. But what his friends told me that he was suicidal and he didn't sleep for two days at all. And you can imagine what happens to a motorcycle motorcyclist who rides for about three hours high speed on a on a highway if he didn't sleep for two days, right? So everybody, like you know, they they knew he is suicidal and he was so obnoxious that they didn't want even you know to deal with him. But uh, he was guided to my Reiki table to get asleep, and um, you know others were also guided. But this time it was like everybody was so relieved that he went, he got his sleep before he rides his motorcycle back to Chicago. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. That's great. I love that story. That's uh -huh. Yeah. So. Um, uh, one thing, you know, how do you get into Reiki? Obviously, you sign up for our lessons or any other body's uh, lessons. You need to get practice. You need to get uh, to be also a, a patient and feel the, the, if you're new to Reiki, to feel the Reiki healing, the energy that comes through you. It opens you. Like w one thing I mentioned, I know, what, when you work on healthy people, what you do, you upgrade their chakras. Obviously, you might want to mention to them, but basically you open the higher level connections. You, in a healthy person, you still have a lot of work to do to do reconnection to the spirit. Basically, the spirit and the physical mind and physical body and 
their acidic body all have to be reintegrated because of all the culture and stuff. So in yoga people they're integrated, but in average Westerner it's disconnected. So all you do is like working on and you place the intention to reintegrate, to heal the educational traumas and stuff, even on healthy people. So coming back, what do you do? You uh, might experience for f if if you loan cash, right? You might experience Reiki as a patient or Reiki as a practitioner in Unitarian Church and Spiritualist Church. Unitarian, they usually have every once in a month, like usually Fridays, they have uh, a Reiki circle where people sit in a circle on chairs and. Uh, people and they sign up and people who are healers provide the healing so uh, you can do either well, either one or another and it's very simple you just place a ha place your hands on the person and do the healing and the second in spiritualist church the same thing it's just not the circle usually it's like straight line but after the and Unitarian sur sur in Unitarian church you don't have to be in the service it's after the service it's a separate event in spiritualist church every uh, service includes a channeling, <laughs> a free channeling and free Reiki. So, so uh, that's a, and there is a, uh, uh, a donation, but basically you define how much you you are able to give. So that's an easy way to do the channeling session. Uh, you know, very brief one, a sampler, channeling sampler and Reiki sampler. Uh, Jim, I think you are. Um, uh, we are cl we are finished the main topics which we wanted to pronounce, and um, now uh, the channel and microphone is open. Anybody else is into channeling today? Is does anybody else want to channel? Well, before you go on to channeling, yes. Just, uh, before you go on to that, I want to say that there are some advanced alien Reiki moves. Yes. Uh, <laughs> And I don't know if any of you are familiar with any of them, but how many of you, when that you are practitioners or above, when you experience the choku ray, it doesn't really want to stop when you finish your when you finish the three uh, the three uh, spirals. It seems like it wants to keep on going on. How many feel yeah, that way? I do that. It's, it, it's a it's not the three, but it can go on and on and on. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Actually, Takur told me that it goes to 12. You could do 12 spiral, and that uh, goes in deeper. It sets in a deeper energy into a deeper area, and it's a more thorough healing tool. So the 12 spirals is uh, much more uh, powerful. So... Actually, hey Jim. Yes. Remember, there was one time I don't know if it was Takar or if it was Lakash or who it was, but he was showing. Okay, the three fingers together, and yes. like an he said, do it like an avocado, and mm -hmm. that there would be like white light here and like platinum or silver light here, mm -hmm. and. So I actually have used this. I have no idea what it does. But <laughs> yes. Do you know there what is, talking about? It, what that does is actually that's a um, that changes the the energy of some people. Some people have like you know when they have all of a sudden they get real jittery or disturbed. That can calm them down very quickly. So well, that's what I it, used that with Brooke the other day. She literally broke out into hives all over her face, and I immediately, I don't know, that's just what I felt drawn to do. Like, okay. And they went away. Hi. It was oh, really cool. Good. But <laughs> she keeps having it. It's like she's processing stuff. And well, then it was get rid of, getting rid of toxins in her system. Is that what you're saying? That it was I, coming, those were coming out? I think she's processing a lot of emotional stuff that is manifesting in a physical nature. Yes, I agree with you there, and it's all going. To, it's going to take a little while for that to come out. Yeah. But she's going to discover 
some very interesting things about herself and about the world. So yeah, that's, she's really going through a a metamorphosis of sorts. Yeah. And she's going to be wonderful. She's a wonderful person. I like her. Yeah. So I really, I really was glad she was at the in New Jersey. So anyway, yeah. I wanted to that. mention their their um, their chukure symbol. Why is it so many things? Uh, so the chukure symbol is uh, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, and then the ascension symbol. So it's it's a, a vortex, and then the ascension. It goes first. It is a spiral, and it goes. It defines the plane, and then there is ascension through to another dimension and an exit. So it's a portal. So you build it basically build a portal. But the property of this portal is it has seven chakras. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see, so when you talk about human design, humans have seven major chakras, and if you build more, uh, how do you call it, uh, more turns in the spiral, then it becomes um, alien design, which is uh, logical, right? Yes, it's the thing is, yes, the choku ray is still valid. It's still a very important part, but they. For deeper, if someone needs a deeper uh, energy input, then the 12 is what you would do. Of course. Yes. And for that particular area. So it's like that concentrates on that area a lot more s strongly or stronger. Are you still saying it three times or are you saying it ten times then? Because no. I, I, I always did it, like I, I made my... Uh, as I would draw it, and I would I would make my chokere like as the line coming down. That was the first one, the first sort of. Right. You know, I have the symbol and the word tied together. So as I say it three times, on the third time I've completed the symbol. Are you saying it more, or yeah. are you just? Well, you see, you say chokere, chokere, chokere. Well, this is not a chokere because it goes twelve times, but. Right. Is it's a an alien symbol that starts like the chokure but goes twelve uh, spirals in, and you don't have to. You just have to say, you know, you just have to intend it to be a healing symbol. She did not give me a name for that. There is another symbol that's similar to it, uh, the symbol similar to the uh, chokure, but that is just called tinche. Which is just without the without the uh, the line going across the top for the Joker eight. It's right. just line down, and then it's uh, the the spirals in. But it can be used as spirals out as well. So to, to draw is the idea of that to draw things out that need to yes. be drawn out right. versus put things, put things in or draw things out. Right. It's a vortex, basically. Right. It's a creation yeah. of a vortex. It's an energy symbol, and it's called, according to Ish, it's called Tinch Che. And, I'll, and I have my friend is making copies and pictures of uh, the 12, the 12, uh, the 12 Chokure spiral and the Tinch Che to show people. So he's put, making those into diagrams. Cool. All right. And so. uh, the, uh, the tinch che, it looks like a choku ray without the top section on it, but it's really cool. But it's very powerful as well. But it's used in a little different way than in Reiki. It's actually not born of Reiki. Actually, it was born somewhere else in the universe. However, Reiki picked up on that same spiral kind of image. Because it is very powerful, it's a, an, an energy image. So um, I will show you the Tinch Che whenever he finishes uh, making that diagram and the twelve spiral Choku Ray or whatever you want to call it. So I have a question for you guys because I haven't heard us discussed. Um, when I got my first attunement and my workbook and whatever. We did, I had to do a 21-day, like, daily healing 
kind of cleansing fast sort of like everyday self healing. Yes. So I don't know if you guys do that also. It is something that would be good to do before you do Reiki, but it's not a necessity. But it is nice. It's it gets you into a different frame of mind to do it. So well, it also like bodily it moves stuff around like absolutely, sure I'm sure like, it does. Probably like having Reiki before Reiki. So <laughs> I mean, I would say I do more Reiki on myself than I do on other people for sure. Um, like, same thing here. I uh, well, I have. Let's see one. Two, three, four, five. I have about six people a week, so I do more Reiki on other people. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I guess you get the Reiki. Although another thing that happened is that since I'm an empath, I could feel, <laughs> when I was giving Brooke Reiki, I could feel her pain. Oh, yes. I can feel pain from some people sometimes as well. Yeah. And then what do you do with it? You, I, I take it and I give it back to Mother Earth. Yeah. Yep, I put it back into Mother Earth. Definitely yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah, so same, same, same thing with me. I feel that it becomes intolerable or unhealthy. I, I change my position. I disconnect. I release it first before continuing. But yes, I'd also feel the, the the pain. Yes, not always. Sometimes. Well, the iron or the the thing that's a weird twist on that is that she is my child, and I cause this particular pain. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was it. Was actually probably like my first thought wasn't to send it into the earth, but I was like, it's not mine, but I take responsibility for my part. Well. So my brain got involved in there somewhere. You may want to take responsibility in the sense that it was one time something that you had. You can own up to it. However, let it go because you're forgiven of it already. So um, you are forgiven, so you don't have to hold on or take responsibility for it now. You can say that, but you don't have to feel that because that's done. That's over. So, and now, now you're getting the healing from it. So, you don't have to accept it as part of who you are anymore. Or yeah, that, that was... you it anymore. Just let the forgiveness go. And as she forgives you, then you're forgiven. Yeah. And so also... I thought it was interesting because my mind wanted to make something out of it. And I was like, this is not about you right now. This is about right. Brooke. <laughs> and also, there's a lot of things, yeah. Also, you're not the same person as as the one who made um, made the right. thing. You change a lot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, hi guys. Yes. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, go ahead. Um, I just I just wanted to ask a, a question, if I may. Yes, go ahead. Hi. Um, sorry, I've never done Reiki before, but um, I just connected because I wanted before before I turned the computer on. Um, I just wanted to ask somebody a question because on Sunday, um, I kind of felt some kind of information coming in. Um, I've been asked for a DNA infusion and maybe a download, and in that information, I kept seeing a moving spiral, and I didn't know what it was, and I'm just a little bit. Um, amazed <laughs> that I just mm -hmm. logged in and, and you were talking about a, a, a spiral so um, I don't know what that means I just uh, connected to, to see if somebody could, not, could answer that in your case the spiral is an energy symbol and it's an energy symbol in Reiki as well it means put the energy here and so you're seeing that the energy is coming to you so that's what the message is for the spiral with you. The energy right. is coming to you. You're getting the downloads. You're getting the different things that are necessary for you. They're not necessarily open yet, but you're still getting them. I see. Oh, thank you, Jim. Thanks. Well, thank you for bringing the next topic, which I wanted to mention. So I showed you a couple of ways of doing the spiral. 
So this spiral where you do spin, 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 and ascension is a symbol of uh, uh, ascending, uh, going into another dimension. And this spiral, you go from outside in, Chukure, it's when you put the energy in. So these are two different uh, approaches. First, up, and then second, down, basically, dimensionally down. Right. Um, and we are into channeling now, or we, do we have more things to discuss? Oh, no. That's, I just wanted to bring those. I guess it was intentional for me to bring the spiral in uh, for Carolina's sakes there. Thank so. you. Thank you. Thank you. She was seeing spirals, and then we, when she tuned in, we were talking about them. So I think it was necessary for her to hear that. I think that was amazing. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, we have so many synchronicities these days. We just kind of got used to that. We are, we are very surprised when there is no synchronicity. <laughs> like... Um, like there is like a letter which me and Kim need to answer for three days, and our answers we just shoot to the same person at the same time in the same same few, you know, few seconds that, that, that we see each other's letters written. We wrote about the same thing to the same person. <laughs> wow! That wow! Yeah, that's things cool. things like that happen like all the time now. Yeah. My cat is uh, my timekeeper. If he comes and wakes me up, it means there is something coming. Something scheduled or unscheduled. I trust him. It's like, you know, I wake up at certain time or I get asleep at certain times. You know, I trust my guides to wake me up. Or, and, you know, the way it's, it's funny how they wake me up. They make me sneeze like I just sleep and then I start sneezing and I wake up. <laughs> but, you know, when it happens, I know it's something coming. I have to wake up. And uh, things of that sort of. And, or if computer crashes, there is a meaning for that as well. There is like so much synchronicity, you just got used to that. Yeah. If things come, you know, things come like I have daily messages, um, like uh, famous quotes, and every day it's it's just uh, you know just right to the point. I think they're personalized for every person. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, All right. but. Uh, let me do a blessing, and you can tune up to to invite someone and and, and channel someone. Who is going to do the blessing? Anybody into blessings? Karen, do you want to, bless, to do a blessing or a channeling? Sure, sure. Should I do it in a galactic language or just a blessing with? Uh, please start in galactic language, and then if you may translate or um, just summarize, that would be wonderful. Okay, sure. Okay. Yar Korea Matela, Kumbat Shashan, Dikara Sika, Lokhyakfa, Matila Romanda, Yakinda, Ishala Rapasi, Difara Manda, Lera Ikala Sa, Ikandia Batu Ayasi, Shandia Shaka of Falaka, Yandi Ora Isakala, Korapaka. Yakiala Undiarara Yariar City Kushiala. Opening your heart, opening your soul, opening your mind, and expanding by love is the way to move forward in expansion. The commitment to your knowing of who you are will guide you through the darkest of storms and light your path for all who come into contact with you. Be brave in your knowing, be loving in your knowing, and share your light with all. That was it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. If there is anybody out there that has anybody coming to them uh, and you're a channeler, go ahead and go for it. Don't be afraid. Nothing can go wrong. You're here with friends. 
All right, I will do a blessing. Mm. I bless a healer within you. You are a healer. Your heart is for healing. Your hands are for healing. Expand into helping others and helping yourself through bringing in the energies of the universe. It is one of the miracles of creation, the healing. You can do miracles. It's one of the permitted miracles in this reality. Make it happen. Do it now. Be brave. Be proactive. Be strong. Be pure. Expand your healing. Grow it as you would grow fire. Healing energies are just like fire. Play with healing energy. Help them grow. Play with the fire. Help it grow. Candles are your best friends. Campfire, wood burning in the campfire, wood burning in your fireplace. Practice Reiki on it. And it is the same energy of creation flowing from the center of the earth, flowing from the sun, flowing from the stars, flowing from, from your heart, from every cell of yours, through DNA, soaking the creation, soaking the nature, the plants, the animals, the air, the water, the sand, the soil, all is soaked in unlimited, immortal energies. You breathe the same air as all people who lived on Earth at all times. You are made of same molecules as all people, all animals, all plants lived on Earth at all times. You carry their lives, you carry their passions in your quants in your molecules, in your atoms, in your electrons. At will you can resonate with all healing energies of the earth. Use it. The miracle is you is at your fingertips. Smile, be happy, choose to smile, choose to be happy and choose to be grateful, choose to be thankful and the doors of abundance, the doors of energy will open to you and bath in them, bath in health. Health is yours if you wish to take it. Health is yours. Amen. Thank you. This is Takur. Hi, Takur. How Thank is everyone today? Hello, Takur. Hi, Hi Takur. I just wanted to speak a moment about Reiki. There are many forms of Reiki throughout the universe. Some are more powerful than others. With the changes in your energies on Earth, your Reikis have become more powerful and more useful. There will be new forms of Reiki coming to you, and you will use them as well as the old forms, for the old forms are not obsolete, but just changed. Now, you won't even need the symbols as much in some cases, because the energy will be right there for you to use. 
you will know when to use symbols and when not to use symbols. There will be times when symbols will enhance the energy, and there will be times when there is no need for them because the energy is already strong enough. This will happen person to person. Those of you who are very powerful in your energies may not need to use symbols at all, but may choose to anyway to even enhance that which you have. And if your belief system tells you you should use these symbols, then you should use them. However, you are coming to a new day and age of energy, a new day and age of understanding of how energy works, a new day and age of DNA understanding as well, and how energy works with that, and how to control it within your bodies. You have telepathy, or you are growing telepathy within your bodies. This is something that DNA is part of, something that is attached with the fourth dimensional energy in your brain brain right to your DNA, right to your nucleotides and helixes, and therefore it is becoming more prevalent. Take heed that it is with much help that you have the healing energy that you have now, but Mother Earth is bringing you a great deal of assistance. She is happy to do so, and will continue to do so. The energies of the earth are now fairly calm, and you will realize that your technologies are working better at this point. This is a good thing, and this is a wonderful time because things will start to work in the way they are supposed to work at this point. It is a time of great understanding of technology and of magic, of the magic of energy, because energy is unseen, but yet very powerful. Is there any questions before I go? Hello, Takur. This is Dan. Dan, how are you? I am well. I had a question about my Reiki hands because yeah. you did you did that wonderful attunement and the the thing about they they feel very heavy and yeah. as they feel more heavy i feel like they are projecting more energy is that correct there are several things happening right now you are attuning yourself to the energies of the earth that are new and so that will cause them to be heavy also because some of that energy gets trapped in your hands and causes them to be heavy, but it also releases much more energy whenever you, you are aware of it. Also, the heaviness is from the universe as well. The universe is sending down energy, and it's changing with the energy of the earth in some ways, and therefore your healing energies are very powerful at this point. I just wanted to point out there is all sorts of places where these energies are coming from. The earth, mother nature, the sky, the universe, and other aliens and other spirits as well. So use that energy on yourself and see what it does. Feel the different kinds of energy that there are. There are 27 different kinds of positive energies and five different kinds of negative energies. So therefore, remember to use as many of them as you can feel and understand. But the intention of them, healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, all these are different kinds of energies. Uh, the pulsation feeling for actual uh, lesion closing and for uh, healing of the body of pain and defense different things. There are different earthly energies that are there within your hands. And if you intend them to work in specific ways, that energy will ignite and work in that way. Is it possible to send the energy out without the hands up? Can I just intend it outward to like somebody like I'm looking at or something? Yes, because the energy and the intention is to move outward from the body 
it does not necessarily always have to come from the hands. It can come from the body, the brain, whatever your belief system agrees to, and send it out. If it's the eyes, that is the most common. They feel like energy comes from their eyes and goes to other people. That is the most common belief, and it does happen because their belief system agrees with it, and the energy flows with it. Right, because there are times when I'm like in a public situation where maybe the raising of the hands may not be appropriate in that public situation, but I still wanted to transmit the energy anyway. I thought if I could just intend it, then that would be okay. Feel free to be your true self. If that is intending without raising the hands, then move forward with it. If you feel that it is more effective to raise the hand, then do so, and do not be afraid of what others think. Okay. All right. Thank you, Takur. You are welcome. Hello, Takur. I have a burning question. I will be very quick. Very well. Just okay. me now. Yes. Um, I recently m met a guy, and he told me this uh, strange story. Uh, and and I, was, I was thinking what would help him, because he can't feel love be towards a girl because uh, his heart starts to, to literally, literally hurt. His organ heart starts to hurt, so he cannot feel love, and he wants to feel love. What do you, what do you think it, this is? This is from a past life situation. Yeah, I so thought it was that. Pardon me? Yes, I thought it was that. It is from a past life situation where the heart has physically been injured by someone he loved. So not only was it spiritually and emotionally injured, it was also physically injured. And therefore this is causing him not to be able to love women. And therefore he must find that past life and have it healed and forgiven. Forgive that person that hurt his heart in so many ways as to cause this in this life. But it needs to be cleared up because love is essential for this life, for this person. Oh, yes, yes. So and you are suggesting... for him waiting for this to be cleared up. What? There's someone waiting for him to have this cleared up so they can love each other. Okay. Okay, so you're suggesting past life uh, Yes, he must actually find a way to... You know this person well. Yes, yes I do. Can you do past life with him? I can try, yes. And see if he can see the that period of time when his most loved person stabbed him in the heart. Okay, okay, okay. Was he a male or a female? I do not know. Okay. Thank you very, very much. He would be very appreciated. You're welcome. Jacker, this is yes. Michelle. Michelle, how are you? I am very well. How are you? I am wonderful. So I'm curious um, because, okay. My thought process is that all of us are healers and that is our birthright. Yes. And there are many modalities, different, uh, of healing, whether it's Peruvian or... Of course, know, uh, yes. And, but I feel like, even though I think maybe the energy energies might be different on some level, they're all somewhat the same, how invested do we need to be in the symbols? Like, I mean, for instance, my teacher was like, you know, very reverent, you know, drawing a great gate like Cherokee Ray symbol on the ceiling, on the floor, on each wall before each session, doing one for each chakra on herself. And I think, well, you know what? I just intend all that. Okay. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I feel lazy like that. <laughs> like, I don't want to go through all the shenanigans when I can just intend that. Um, am I just being lazy, or does it need to be done? 
You can do it in your mind if you feel more comfortable. However, it is the intention that is the most powerful portion of it. The belief system of it. And actually, the actual symbol is powerful to be done. But you do not need it in this day and age. When you were being taught about these symbols, the symbols had more meaning and power then than they do now, and that is because the new energies are stronger. But they still have the same meanings, but they, the power around you for intention is much greater. You can manifest in a much easier way now. So, okay, I think that yes, your, your answer is intention is more powerful than the symbols, if that's what you believe. Yes. Um, Tucker? Yes. Um, I didn't speak to you for a while, uh, so I have a couple things related to healing, and I think it's appropriate that I pronounce them. Very because well. Because when it's pronounced in a, groups, in a group setting, it might have even bigger healing effect. Yes. So my family, uh, every member of my family is under stress. It's a pleasant stress. Very nice events are happening, but we, the life is absolutely crazy this day. It's just super crazy. So I'm, I, I invite more healing and more supervision and more um, caring from uh, you guys, from uh, Girk Fitnir friends. If yes. you can check out every, every member of my family to make sure they are, uh, they are Perceiving, perceiving these changes in a healthy way because it's, it's borderline. There is, right? there is something you can do to help them more than Absolutely. even. Absolutely. Fill, the rooms, fill the rooms with positive energy, with the positive words, with love and light every day. And they will not, they cannot help but feel that and it has a calming effect upon them. Especially when they are come into the door from an outside area that and they are feeling frazzled or nervous or anxious when you fill the room with calmness with peace with healing with love with wisdom with understanding fill all the rooms as much as possible with gratitude and wishes for prosperity and love and guidance then they will feel this but we will also help because when we hear you doing this we will double the energy that goes into the language because the words are what are powerful and what the feelings behind the words are just as powerful so if you, you say words and do not mean them they are still powerful but when you feel what they mean and are feeling the emotions of these words then they are even doubly powerful thank you your advice surprisingly is Falling on the on the ground where I have no experience. I never meet my my family when they come in. I sort of busy with you know cooking or doing something else. You don't so have really, to. I have to stop it and and go meet them, right? <laughs> no, you don't have to actually stop and go meet them, but fill the rooms with the powerful words. And then when you do go see them, they will see that you have that you are calm and peaceful and full of love. Uh -huh. Thank you. There is a uh, one more uh, request. Yes. Uh, my dearest friend, my um, the person who replaced my mother uh, when she died. She she just passed away a few days ago, um, about three weeks ago. Her name is Lydia Yurovska. Yes. And um, I just wonder if you can get any message from her back to her family. Yes. I will speak to her. Thank you. If I can. She is probably in the midst of process right now and cannot be disturbed. Okay. That is all I wanted to say. If there is any more questions, please uh, ask them now. Yes. Yes, Tucker. Hi, it's Carolina. Hi, Carolina. I love you. I love you um, as well. Thank you. I just wanted to ask, I feel a blockage in my throat. Um, I've, got, I've got wonderful thoughts, but I can't, the words are not coming out. I can't articulate. Um, and uh, I was wondering if you could tell me what could
could I do to help myself get rid of yes, this? Yes, I can tell you a couple things. First of all, find something beautiful in blue because the throat chakra is a beautiful blue color and it will help you to uh, brighten that throat chakra. Also, I want you to meditate on the intention of bringing the messages to those people that need the messages the most so that these words will not go in vain and they will speak out at the time when it is necessary. But first of all, put your chakra into health by seeing the bright blue, seeing something bright and blue and enjoying that color and asking it to be part of you and brighten your throat communication chakra. Also, blue is a calming color. Ask it to calm your mind and bring the messages in in a way that can be spoken in a way that sounds like you could speak them to others and they would make sense to them. Because sometimes people get messages and they're all jumbled together and then they need separated by the, the thought process. And therefore, yeah. I say to you now that a, a small, not even a great meditation will help you bring these back into focus. Pray for the... Meditate on focus and communication of the things that need to be said, on the people that need to be said to. And you will find that after your communication chakra has brightened, you will have more of an awareness of how to continue. Thank you, Dika. I'll, I'll do that. You're welcome. I love you. Love Thank you, you Tucker. I, I have two things to say. Um, one is uh, if the timing is right and everything is good, I think it would be great to invite an Arcturian to do a little introduction to Arcturian Reiki. It is so fascinating and interesting. And the second thing, if anybody has any more questions before Tucker go, I think that would be a good time for you to step up and speak. I want to have one question just to Tucker. Yes. Hello, Tucker. This is Johannes. Yes. Uh, be, just before you came in uh, through Jim, uh, I was like preparing myself for channeling, and I, I, you were the first one, the name that came up to my mind. Yes. So I just want to ask if if we can confirm that connection, or if that was yeah. just you hoping that. It was... you, yes, you were hesitating, so I jumped over. Yeah. Thank you. You are welcome. Um, Takara, I have also a question. Hi, it's Karen. How are you? Very well. How are you? I'm good. I yesterday for the first time I actually channeled a different being, different beings other than Theos. Um, I channeled a being called Demetria, and she is Pleiadian, and she was yes. giving information directly related to first contact. Yes. Um, what she said was interesting to me, and. Um, and, and since you've been in uh, contact with the governments, I, I want to confirm this with you. She said that there was the consideration ongoing that would circumvent the governments uh, when it comes to first contact in that they were going to measure the interest of the human race versus the small amount of people within the government and she said that the amount of people in the world that were wanting um, contact was far greater than those within the government and that the original agreement was that when they reached a critical mass of wanting from the humans that they would come forward and yeah. so they are basically um, and I don't know if she is part of your negotiation, is, but she said that they were considering moving forward regardless of the government's uh, decision. They, are, they will take counsel with us very shortly. The okay. reason, what she is saying is that there are a lot more people wanting first contact than there are people in the government. That yes. is true. Now, yes. what the other part she did not mention is although there are far more people wanting first contract 
contact than in, in the government. There are still areas of the world that are not ready. Right. Um, they are large areas of the world in a couple yes. of places. And so, therefore, we are trying to get those places ready as quickly as possible. Now, the, the cities, the large cities, mm -hmm. uh, I would say in the larger cities, more people are ready. Yes. But they yes. are aware. Not everyone in the larger cities are aware because, you know, there will still be panic for those that are so third dimensional that they cannot see beyond anything, beyond their nose, as they say. But there are those that are now being enlightened in much greater ways since they acknowledge that the energy of the planet has changed. There are those that were not aware of it and were feeling strange and different things and then found out that the earth was going through change and so they had to believe it because it was something very unusual for them to feel and go through. So now we have many more that are enlightening to the fact of the ascension because of Mother Earth's actions after this um, blood moon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's basically what she said. She is correct. Okay, okay. But we would we would counsel them against moving too quickly. Because she had said that they were planning to come in the period of time of two, fall of 2016. She, but she didn't say that it was definite. But that 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 is what they were had been planning. Yes, that, was that the, is correct. Okay. We will check that out and see what their findings are and compare notes on the different aspects and where they are going to go. Okay. All there right. are Thank some you. areas that if a ship landed right now they would probably be welcomed. However, there if a ship landed in other areas or they would not even make it to the ground, it would be destroyed. Well that's what she said. She said uh, that they were they realized that there would be some fear, but they would do everything within their ability to dissuade the fear, to, to assure tell, people. Did they tell you they were bringing any earthlings along to be, um, to help them? No, what she said was that they would, it was not just her race, but there were many that were coming yep. together. Um, um, of yeah. course, New Yield was voted to be the first race to make the first contact. However, since there are now several many, uh, uh, at least 30 or 4 more species that we are just learning about that are coming into this area that is all uh, up in the air now. Okay, yeah, okay. It was just interesting because I, I never had channeled her before and um, she came through very clearly but it really sounds like, and I did record the channeling, it sounded very much like she was reading a pre-prepared Transmission. Um, so yeah, it was, Demetria, a, it was. Is her name Demetria? Yes. Yes, I know who she is. From Noron, she said. She said, "I am Demetria Noron Pleiadia." That's what she said. Noron Alpha Centra Pleiadia five nine seven. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Is Noron a planet or a star? That is the star system. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me well? I hear you very well. Okay. Uh, great. I'm uh, very honored to be here. Uh, I have one question, and that is. Uh, what are the probabilities for an alien life to be found in 2016 as a fact on a collective level? To be found on your planet? Not on, yes, yes, on our planet. In a collective level? Yes. I'm not sure exactly what the question is, but I would say that the, the chances are they have already seen in ho holographic form some of the collectives they've already been made aware of them 
but to find them on Earth in the physical form would be very difficult. Men in black are everywhere, and if they do not have permission to be there, they will be sent away. If they have permission, then they will be seen by politicians and not by the regular people of the Earth. If they are seen by the regular people of the Earth, that would be a contractual break, and there would be some problems. However, I would love to see some of the communal species appear on Earth in some way or another to visit with certain humans that are ready for it. Uh, well, I actually uh, meant more like uh, found uh, uh, by NASA, uh, like in a form of a microbe or something similar on other planets. They are being found. That, that is something different. There are some species that come through the atmosphere that are on, are on Earth that are not able to be controlled. They're so small, they are so um, limited in their power, really, that they can be found by your scientists, yes. Even um, neutrinos can house some kinds of species. So there, there are many being found. They just do not realize how intelligent some of these species are. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. All right, I must go now. I just stopped in to speak briefly about Reiki. Thank you, Takura. You were very helpful. Thank that you. Was, uh, enlightening and much pleasure and warmth to, to, to speak to you and be in your presence. Thank you, Takura. Much love to you. Thank you. Thank you, Takura. Thank you, Takura. See you soon. Hello. Hmm. Hello. Hi, uh, Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good, good. good. That was nice. Excellent. Thanks. Um, I'm going to step away for a minute. I have uh, some things I have to do. I'll be right back. All right. Thanks. All righty then. Okay. I uh, had uh, we, we, in the questions to Tucker, we brought some questions and uh, I just wanted to comment on those questions so for the question how can you use your hands without disturbing the public um, <laughs> it's, uh, it really depends if they look at you or not but but basically um, you know you can obviously send the energy without using the hands but if you want to use hands and uh, they can be anywhere the direction really, really doesn't matter you can the energy can can bend so if you just open your hands like that, it's sufficient to send the energy. And you can uh, send it, say, from behind easily. It's one of the Reiki positions. It's one of the advanced Reiki positions, but that will work just fine. You can practice it. It goes like and uh, and it circles and ends up wherever it's needed. It's uh, uh, on YouTube, there are videos when you can do Reiki like that, and it's very powerful. Uh, it's different than, than when you touch, when you hold it close, or when you set it from the distance. It's different, but the energy can bend and reach where you need it. And practice that with animals, humans, plants, uh, lakes, rivers, uh, earth, earth um, structures, uh, that, that is very doable, and um, I, for me, it's part of daily routine, daily meditation. I send energy to th different things which I think are need need my energy, like vortexes and stuff. 
Um, obviously, you can uh, hold the hands in, in other ways, but but that would be my one. Of, another one is, is like say, like that is part of my meditation is just to send the energy to the earth, and that is part of the sending energy just to someone. It looks a little weird, but but that's how I would send energy in public situation where people don't really understand what I'm doing. But I need to send energy somewhere. That's that's kind of sending it from the bottom, like like this. I intend it to bend, so so it bends. I feel like like when it flows, I feel it flowing. Um, any questions on here on that question, on that topic? No. The second one was uh, yes, yes. Yes. Is it, I have heard it said that it's inappropriate to offer people Reiki who have not given any permission. Absolutely, yes. Um, so you have to make sure, you have to be sure in your heart that it's appropriate. Like when you drive and there is a uh, accident and you feel that someone is hurt, I think it's absolutely appropriate. You are sure that, that this energy will be, will be useful. Right. When it is a child, and the child is clearly in need for love, like you're walking on the railway station and, and the child is crying, or Walmart, you know. In Walmart, children always cry. I don't know. People who make children cry go to Walmart to even, you know, enjoy the, doing it on public, I guess. But, you know, that's what, well, I think that's, that's where it's absolutely, undoubtedly appropriate. So, and if, yes. Well, the caveat to that could be like my I send my intention from my higher self to their higher self, and they can choose to receive it that way. Do you think that's appropriate? Absolutely, yeah. No, I don't force it. Obviously, I wouldn't send it to someone who doesn't need it. But sometimes it's rather obvious. And again, Reiki is something you provide them with the opportunity to take it, and it's up to them to take it. But sometimes it's like. Imagine, like in a car accident, it's not only the person like laying on the ground; it's it's angels around, and the fact that there is a healer nearby offering their reiki is like the angel can grab the reiki and put it right there. Like that's how I imagine that. I, I imagine that on the other side there is tons of helpers, and the fact that we are here offering is 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 handy. It's handy. It's like. Um, I don't know. Uh, imagine some other situation like that in, in 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 physical life. Like sometimes it just handy things come to you. Like uh, it so often happens uh, in business. Like you you look for help and help and and somebody who is a helper just comes and offers that help. Like here is the contact, or here is the like the Reiki healer, or here is their some other help, or here's information you needed. So, so that happens all the time, and that happens, I think, on the healing level as well. Uh, with heart, uh, heart pain, I would also use Reiki. Uh, Tucker didn't mention, but I think it's obvious that as soon as you realize it's a past life issue and it needs to be healed, Reiki, self Reiki, and Reiki by others. With the intention to heal that past life issue would be pre a prescription. So that's my prescription for you. Do Reiki and uh, let's do just a half a second meditation. So, uh, are you pro is it appropriate to pronounce the name of that person? Uh, yes. Uh, if if you don't, if you're not sure, we can do a nickname. But any, no, any I'm sure. All right, Dimitri. Oh, so we have Dimitri dominating today's uh, of course <laughs> today uh, vibe. So we send the healing to Dimitri's heart in this life and in the past life where it was hurt. We invite the healing energies of the universe, the healing energy of the source, the healing energy of the Earth, of the sun, of the moon, of the stars, of the planets, to come to his heart and fix something which is now an illusion. It is an illusionary pain and it can easily go. Just forgive yourself now, forgive yourself back then, 
forgive the one who hurt you. She was just a mirror of you. It was just a combination of unfortunate circumstances. And things went wrong to give you lessons. The lessons were learned on all levels now. And it's time for closure, time for forgiveness, time for acceptance, and time for healing. You heal now. Let it go. You're already a new person. You can change to a new person. You are the new person who doesn't have that problem anymore. Choose to be healed, and you are healed. Vulnerability and pain is is very healing. Feeling vulnerable is wonderful. It is the way to change yourself and it is the way to heal the world. It's okay to feel pain. Just understand that now it becomes not harmful but healing. It is a healing pain. Don't push yourself for more pain but when it comes let it flash yourself and release it. Release it consciously. Release it through <coughs> coughing, sneezing, air, releasing fluids, releasing energies, releasing movements, writing it down, painting, creativity. Now that pain can leave your body, can leave your energetic structures and become something beautiful. Emma. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, manifest. So, negativity. Yeah. Uh, as you become a Reiki healer, you can obviously manifest positive things, but keep in mind that you can manifest negative things just as easily. So, in the past, it all was a mess, but now you have given a magic wand, magic wand, and uh, if you're pure, happy, if you're smiling no matter what, if you choose to be happy and smiling no matter what, your energy is healing, but if you are angry, if you are, what is it, that, contemptuous, is it the right word? If you are depressed and if you thrive on that negativity, then you can create things as easily negative. So don't be surprised. Just don't be afraid of negativity. Just keep in mind, logically, have your mind watching what's happening. And whenever you notice that your negative thoughts, bring up negative events, connect those and you will be surprised how easily these things manifest and obviously then it empowers you to manifest good things. So when you see sickness, first thing to do is smile, accept and then convert it in something which is enlightening like release. When you see a person crying, it could be converted to release. It could be converted to understanding. It could be converted to ascension, elevation of their spirit, reconnection, right? When you feel pain, it's, a, it's not only the sign of organic disorder. It's also a sign of disbalance and blockage, which can be released. And something in the emotion, something in the past of the person, can, which is associated with, can be released and healed all together. So understand your power of creating negative and positive manifestation and choose wisely. Any comments here? I'm, I'm done with my uh, list of things which I needed to pronounce for now. Hello, Max. Hello. Is, is, is that you? Oh, is it somewhere yeah, else? Here. Oh, hi, Max. Um, Carolina, yes. What would you recommend for traumas in this lifetime? How how can we get rid of those negative 
things that actually happen in this lifetime. I I heard everything except the word. What is we are healing? What is this? What is we are healing? What is that? Well, you said you know for past lifetimes, if somebody had a trauma, um, it, you said something like how to heal. But how about if it's actually happened in this lifetime, and uh, the person hasn't been able to get over it yet? I heard some of the words, but not all the words. Are you talking about trauma? What What are we healing? Is it a trauma, pain? What is this? Yes, yes. is is not past past life trauma. Trauma. It's, okay. Is is this life trauma? Trauma that has happened in this lifetime. All right. In this in this lifetime. All right. There is many answers to that. Many, and um, there are multiple ways of doing that. Uh, the beginning stage, according to Bashar, and my favorite, is acceptance. Acceptance and forgiveness. Just Bashar says, until you own it, you cannot change it. So first thing you have to internalize it, accept it. Accept that it already happened. Accept with no resentment. Just take it in and take it as a thing that happened. It could be your fault, it could be somebody else's fault, but just accept it's already there. Whatever it is, trauma, pain, negativity, you have to take it in, in a feminine fashion, just passive, just, oh well, whatever, it is here, like that. Now, what do we do with this? That's the attitude. You can even thank you. Thank you for coming. You are not welcome, but now you're here, so you can stay. Something like that. That you accept it, and that allows you to see it better. When it's inside, you see it better. So the first step is an acceptance. Then you have to be inventive, really, how to heal it. And there is many ways. I always go logical, analytical. And I know you have that very strong analytical mind of yours, analytical fashion, analytical facet of yours. So, so analytical would be the psychoanalysis. Why did it happen? Whose fault is that, right? And then realize that even if it was your fault, because it was always in any trauma there is two parts one is someone from outside and one is you one is you who accepted it because if you were different that wouldn't happen like many people have terrible abusive relationship in a group or in a family and then you imagine if that person was someone else that wouldn't happen because someone else would even not wouldn't even notice that trauma would even notice that abuse it really takes two people to get, um, say, abuse and be an abused relationship because, you know, it takes two to have that relationship, okay? So you have to analyze and understand who harmed who and what were their circumstances and where the attacker or predator did their work and where the victim did their mistakes to allow the trauma to happen, okay? You analyze and then if you forgive both and understand you are not in either one of them anymore you choose to you decide to get out of this paradigm of this dilemma of this relationship oh, and uh, there is sometimes it's very easy and sometimes it is not easy especially if you're in depression sometimes you basically have to decide first to be happy and then walk the walk, walk the path of getting out of that. Like swim up before you even see where is up, before you see the sun. You are in the dirt all the way and you just kind of keep pushing, keep pushing, keep aiming up until you keep the breath and get to the light. That's a conscious choice to stay oriented on the positive and not oriented on the negative. Because if you get stuck Oh, he hurt me, or she hurt me, or I made a mistake. Oh my gosh, I made a mistake. I still have that. I made some mistakes, and 
Every time I remember him, I get goosebumps and I shake. Oh, was it me doing that? Oh, what a terrible mistake. But understand, you are here in this life to make mistakes. There is not even possible not to make mistakes. Even the smartest people, like Napoleon, the luckiest of all, or whoever, make mistakes. It's programmed. The sickness is programmed here by design. There are angels of sickness, angels of death. By the way, Jim is connected to, to an angel of death. So uh, he's uh, full of light by choice, but you know there are angels of death, gen angels of sickness, uh, fairies of sickness, um, fairies and angels of mistakes. Not angels, but certain spiritual beings who bring the mistakes. There are planetary designs and something in this retrograde, and you are destined to make this mistake. There is no way not to make mistakes. So no way to be uh, not vulnerable. You're always vulnerable. So it's just take it as it is. Take it as it is, natu as, it, as if it was natural. You are not crying every night because just because the sun is gone. You're not crying because the evening is coming to you. The darkness comes every day, and you just got used to that, right? So get used to their traumas. Oh, okay, that's another trauma. All right. Now I am 51. Imagine how many friends already died. I mean, yeah. I don't choose death, right? But um, I come from a family of priests in uh, spiritual inheritance and genetic physical inheritance. I come from Jewish rabbis through many, many generations of Jewish rabbis. And imagine what rabbis do, right? They officiate the births, officiate the marriages, and officiate deaths. That's what they do. And how can the whole life you be, you know, you see people dying and officiate and everybody is grieving and what do you do? How don't you yourself fall apart, right? It's so easy to fall apart if you're surrounded by by so big life-changing events, life-going events, life-coming events. And you just realize it's a habit. <laughs> it's just a habit. It's something which you do professionally. It's by choice. You feel like somebody has to do that, uh, and I choose to do that because I can get, I can serve here. I can serve here. So, so same thing. You just get used to being harmed and get used to recovery of from being harmed. For now, for us Reiki healers, self-healing, self-recovery is now just a habit. Just a, it's a, the miracle becomes a habit. You still don't understand it, but it is a habit, right? So when it is happening first time, you just say, "How about I connect to myself when I do it many times?" For me, it would be just a habit to get rid of it, like <sighs> whatever. I'm new, I'm recovered, I'm replenished, I am healed, I'm rested, I'm happy by choice. I smile first and I see the light around and let, I let healing energies and healing light populate me, enter me, inflate me, make me vibrant. And I'm here for a purpose. I choose the purpose of service and I need that help to help others. I need that healing, I need that health, I need that capacity to help others so I can serve. Thank you, the creation, for giving me this energy. Thank you for giving me this pain to, and teaching me how to get rid of it. I'm new and I do my work now diligently and in happy peace of mind. All right, and then you have to change, basically. Uh, to get rid of the pain, you got to change. And changing is not always easy. You have to basically go from rigid structure to a fluid structure and back, recreate yourself rigid again, recrystallize yourself. So you melt your crystal structure and recrystallize again. So how to change, how to... You have to agree to change. It's intuitive now. You have to agree 
to melt. You have to agree to let things go. So basically, you don't understand all the detail. You have to trust that your higher self, your spirit guides, the creator, the creation will guide you through this process. Just letting things go, letting the control go, just release the control, just not hold the steering wheel all the time. For now, just release the steering wheel. I'm not in control. I'm in pain. I'm sick. I need time and I need that melting for recovery. You see that fever that you get, fever that you get, that's, that's whatever, um, 100 degrees what you get, is another way of melting your structures. When you are sick, you, have, you go through the path of feeling pain, feeling that heat, and then you get out of it refreshed, and that's a perfect time for recrystallization. So you don't have to go through high fever, but basically the same principle applies here. You have to decide and let the control go and say go. I go in the meditation and I want to change, I want to melt, I want to transform, and whatever it needs to go, I can choose and let it let it go. So that is a conscious state of healing, basically. When you bring someone to a Reiki state, just by placing hands on them, you sort of melt them a little bit. You melt some of their structures. When you do Reiki on yourself, like the simplest way is just to place hands on yourself and go into nap with the purpose of transforming and changing. That's what you do. There is many more tricks of doing that change. Bashar has a beautiful one of the change and uh, it's for me it was the best meditation ever it was profound I, I guess you know Slava you're listening to that can you if you know what I'm talking about can you get it get get it somehow Maybe, I think it, it was on YouTube I just forgot what what was the name of it but basically it's transformational meditation change in meditation and the key there was healing light uh, healing childhood traumas, childhood traumas. Every one of us here on Earth has its childhood traumas, and especially in Russian culture, and also in Western culture, they teach you not to trust parents. They teach you not to trust. They teach you, first they attract you, saying, here is my love, here is everything, and then they push you away, saying, I'm angry on you, and you are naughty, right? So how is it possible these two things don't meld together? It's not the same thing, right? So how is it, so the child get this childhood trauma of love and not love at the same time? Love and being abandoned. So abandoned. So so healing that, forgiving that, understanding that, releasing that is one of the key things for change, and um, in that Bashar meditation, it plays really well. It plays really well. It's really refreshing and recovery. So, and then, and then at the end, basically, after doing that transformation, holding on to words is great, great help. You really develop a formula for yourself, and sometimes this formula is very simple. I forgive myself. I want to move on. Or the shortest form is whatever. Whatever, I move on. Whatever, I am new now, I move on. Whatever, I have life to live, things to do. I choose my highest excitement. I am needed, I, I want to move on. And that's about it. <coughs> and then you can structure it in many ways. Any comments and uh, does it help here? Jim, do you want to comment? Thank you, Max. You're welcome. Good. That's good. Um, I think that moving on is a is a very important part. I there can't be enough emphasis putting on after you've done all the things that you need to do, not to co not to go back to this, not to bring it back and dwell on it again. If you start finding that you're hurting about the same things that you have forgiven and released then it's not forgiven and released you when it starts coming back just push it away say dear God that's not who I am that's not part of me anymore a lot of times what happens is this people have traumatic experiences they forgive other people they forgive themselves and then what happens 
they're dwelling on it again. They're thinking, well, they really, really hurt me. That was a really bad experience. Guess what? It's all over again. You have to re-forgive it and re-let it go. You, you don't want to keep doing that all the time. You don't want to uh, keep uh, having to repeat that cycle of doing all, all that over and over again. When you let it go, let it go. And when it tries to come back, don't let it. Find a way, talk to God, and tell him, I've already released this, please. Let me think of something else. Start doing something else. Start thinking something else. Because dwelling on that past thing is only going to hurt you and not help you. Thanks, Jim. Wonderful. I want to share one, one of my lessons. Um, obviously, it is about love relationship. Mm -hmm. There was a wonderful, beautiful uh, girl, which I I don't want to put the time on it. Love. I would put it in present time. I love. And um, she had a property that sometimes she would bring me absolute joy and often she would bring me absolute suffering. It was just a nightmare how painful it was. When she was mine, it was beautiful. When she was sort of uh, living to some other people and spending time with other people ignoring me, that was so much pain I couldn't tolerate it, right? It's it's classical, right? Classical. And I understand everybody goes through that. but. At some point, I realized I go through that cycle of joy, suffering, joy, suffering so often that it is something in me, not in her. It's my property. It is something which I need to change, not in my relationship to her, but on my side, on my side. And I decided, how about, you know, in physics it's called demon of Maxwell, but really it's you allow joy in and don't, you don't allow yourself to suffer at all. Just put a blockage. No, I wouldn't suffer. She wants, you know, she enjoys making me suffer or she doesn't enjoy, but I, do, I choose not to suffer. It was even before Bashar. I just chose not to suffer at all. I wouldn't be sad at all. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Joy is accepted. Uh, suffering, no, I don't want it anymore. So simple, right? It was hard to implement, hard to take it in, but it was one of the biggest lessons in my life, actually. You take joy from the environment, and you don't take suffering. No, it's not mine. I, no, sorry, mm -hmm. I refuse. Yes, it is conventional. It's people used to suffer in this situation, but I wouldn't. <laughs> yes. Remember, remember what they, they say. If you get negativity from somebody, that's their negativity, not yours. If they try to give it to you, it's not yours. You don't have to take it. Be who you perfectly are, accept who you are, and if you have pain there, then find out where that's coming from. But when other people try to give you pain, you don't have to accept it. It's not your pain. It's theirs, their pain that they're trying to give to you. Do you understand that? You, their pain they want to give to you because why? It's just who they part of who they are. And when you're giving pain to other people, ah, oh, that's you and not them. Because what you're doing is transferring your pain onto them, and that's what they do to you. They transfer their pain onto you. And um, you don't have to accept that kind of thing. But I hope you're not the one transferring the pain onto them. You need some. You need some introspective. If you are, you need some uh, to let go of some of those negative uh, properties. If you are, but remember, when you look at people with unconditional love, that's all you see is the good stuff. If they start giving you negative stuff, then that's when you could really realize that it's not you. It's not you. If you're giving them love and they're giving you. Uh, pain and suffering, who's who's at fault there? Uh, you don't want to say fault, but who's giving the negativity? You don't have to accept that. It's not you. Even if some of the things they say you can relate to, like if they call you a lazy bum, blah, 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 and you are a lazy person, it's still not you because it's their words. You don't see it that way. <laughs> obviously. So don't accept it the way it's said to you. 
you can you can maybe bring it in and say, okay, I understand what they said, and maybe some of it's true, but you don't have to accept it as negative. Let them be the negative one, and don't be the acceptance of negativity because that hurts you, that makes you ill if you hold it in long enough, and it changes who you, your perfect person. You want that person, perfect person that you are to be great and wonderful and resonating with the things that you're doing and having a great time. Um, I'm sure you know that every human is not perfect. None of us are perfect. But let's become as close to perfect as we can be in this lifetime because that's when we're going to do the most amount of good. We're going to be an example. We're going to be using the skills that we were given and doing all the things that we should do because that's what resonates with us is that we should be doing those things. So remember that. When other people put negativity on you, you don't have to accept it. If you do, then see that that's become part of you then. But if it's not part of you, don't accept it. So Here is an example. Um, in uh, martial arts, um, you don't always push and fight. Sometimes you just step aside and let the other person should go through and use their energy and fall by themselves. You don't really participate in the fight. You kind of invite the attack and then kind of step aside. So so that is that or in fencing it is the same thing. Sometimes you push and poke and sometimes you kind of just step aside and let, let the other person go to go through. So that transparency is sort of passive way of if somebody wants to fight with you, you can become transparent and absent basically, absent minded, absent from the conflict. Uh, you can either reflect things, attack, reflect, proactively do things or uh, define your vibration and send it out but if it doesn't work you just kind of withdraw, withdraw and let them you know fight with themselves, you're not part of that. So becoming transparent and passive is one of the tricks, but basically don't take the negativity in. Like if you go to <laughs> public food place and some food is not edible, just don't eat it, right? So same thing with, with relationship. If something is not edible, don't swallow it. <laughs> All right, are we ready for the bl closing blessings? Who is um, into blessings at the moment? Yeah. Gurudan, are you into blessings? Can you hear me? Now, Hello? yes. Yeah. Ah, yes, now, yes. Okay, great. I came in. Nirvana, right? Noha. 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 This is my spiritual name, Nirvana, so I'll be in the Nirvana bliss state. Okay, you want me to go through, through the blessings? Yes. That's hold on a second, hold on a second. Before, uh, before we start the final closing sequence, let's... Uh, discover everybody who wants to give a blessing so we don't leave them. Let's line up. Uh, we have Philip, uh, Michelle, Luca, John, Johan, Jasmina, Jim, Gurudan, and Carolan. Anyone is into blessings? I can try and make him on a blessing after Noah. Okay, nice. Johan, Mr. All right. Okay, I just want to say something about uh, negative, uh, you know, negative uh, attacks from uh, close people, close surrounding okay. people. Uh, okay. I always I face it here in the family, but what can I say? I keep on telling my mom, just relax. Why are you like this? You should relax because you're in a different world. What is this? Cool I keep on telling her, cool down. She, she's not getting it. So what I'm taking it from one ear to the other because she's always on that state, you know? And then mm -hmm. just. Draw in the light. Draw in the light. So you, you become in, you become light. If you become the light, then what whatever is coming through to you is not affecting you. And I'm an, and I'm also into breathing because I used to go. I used to. I got it from my yogi studies. Breathe a lot. When you breathe a lot, what happens is you become. You have this shield about you. It doesn't affect you that much that it used to be. Before it used mm -hmm. to be very effective and it used to burn me. You know. Now, she, whatever she says, this is what she is at the stage. You cannot tell it, you know. I'm just, I'm just repelling light, you know, all the time. So, 
Wonderful, okay. yes. Yeah, uh, breathing technique does help, believe me. Yes, you know, yes, like, we do that too, yes. Breathing is breathing important, is, yes. The breathing technique that when you do it, uh, you take it in and you, as if you're sighing out, like, <sighs> like that, with the, with a sigh, you know? This one yes. shield your body. It does mm -hmm. shield your body. So and hold on to your vibration. Don't take the other's vibration. Don't this tune into yeah. the other's vibration. Yes. Yes, that's right. Okay, let's go into that. Uh, the blessings. <laughs> Thank you. It comes like Woody would echo to me all the time. I don't know why, but it's like that. This is what it comes like. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. I think <laughs> it was you. about the birds. All right. Thank you. Miawasia tawa hawa ia wana wa tiawasia waha ia wana wa ia wa ia. One of the sicknesses of the world is loneliness. People are sick because they are lonely. You can choose to help anyone. Don't turn anyone down for any negative person, for any person who is in denial. You always can find at least a few words of compassion, at least a few words that can change them. Don't take their negativity, but link to them briefly to find the next step, the little thing, at least a little thing that you can give them, a little thing that can enlighten their day, that can help them to lift up. Sometimes you just need to ask yourself, how can I help? What is the next step? What is the message? What is the word I can give to this person today? And just give this little bit of compassion and charge it with your healing energy. It is always possible. Don't turn anyone down. Connect to all and serve to all. You can do that. You can do that. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this time of learning, for this time of community, for this time of being with each other and learning more about each other and about wisdom and different things, how to become better people, how to become better acquainted with spirit, how to be better healers. We just ask that you would be with us now as we go our separate ways. We love you very much and that we know that you're always with us and guiding us. So keep us in good spirits. And if there is a time of sadness, sorrow, or trouble, help us to get through it with the greatest of ease possible because that's what joy, love, and honor will do and support from your friends. 
We love you. Help us always. And we pray that each and every one has gotten something out of this today. Amen. Amen. Namaste. Wonderful. That was a healing chant from... They healing chant from where? Septimus 7. Beautiful. Beautiful. It was gorgeous, yes. It's a Reiki council there. Mm. It sounded like a bowl. It sounded like a sound bowl, you know? Wow, yeah. that was amazing. That, that was a firma Reiki council or an energy council of some sort. Very strong. You said Octopus 7? Septivus 7. Septivus? Septivus. Septivus. Septivus 7. Thank you. He said they were from an oh. energy council, an energy council, healing energy. Beautiful. We send them our timeless gratitude. Yes. Thank you. Uh, can I just say, uh, I've never given a blessing before, but, um, can somebody read? redirect a blessing to Guru Dan. He's not feeling very well. Of course. Who is it? Guru Dan. Is it still your stomach, Guru Dan? <laughs> um, it's lying yeah. down. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, it's been bugging right. me the whole time. It, it really came up again a little while ago and go, oh, well, I'm going to lay down here and take it easy. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is about today. It's just today. I don't All right, I'll send some energy to you, Guru Dan. Thank you. Hey, Guru Dan. Yes? You know, when you have recently been activated with energy, your body does lots of it fun things, some of which feel like flu or death. Um, <laughs> like, that was my experience. Prefer so, like, in that order. <laughs> for, for, so, I mean, if you can connect it to that, like, my body is shedding old things because I yeah, have new energy coming in. Yeah, it's doing whatever it's doing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is release, which I'm used to that now, right? But basically, you, <laughs> you release liquids and stuff. Dirt. The, the energies just come out as dirt out of you. And uh, that's given. But the, you just take time and it, it, it normalizes by itself. It's, it's something spiritual. Something spiritual. And just, yeah, it's some it, kind it's of ascension. It doesn't matter how process. it works. Yes. Yeah, it's some kind of ascension thing. I don't know what it is. It's just wacky day. All right. Ah. <sighs> Thank you, everybody. It was really fun to do the uh, meeting with you, uh, hang out with you. Thank you, uh, Carolina, how Gurudan, soon, Jim, Jim. Yes. How soon to go now? <laughs> well, we've been on since 2 o'clock. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, God. I just came the Johannes, last minute. Luca, Michelle, Nirvana. Thank you, everybody, and thanks for everybody. Uh, there is four viewers thank now watching, and thank you, everybody who is watching watch. later. Yeah, we will. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
All right. Much goodbye. Love. Much love. Take care of yourself. Much love. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.